Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shambhavi Jaiman. I'm here today for the Mental Health Notes episode. And today we are talking about a very important topic which a lot of us struggle with, that is anxiety. Anxiety can be something which we come across in our day-to-day -day lives. It can be when we get up in the morning, we are getting late for work, that can make us anxious. It can be when we have an important meeting or a job interview, that can make us anxious. It can be an important exam. It depends on what sort of anxiety you're having, at what time, at what place, to what intensity, which describes it to be a disorder or a normal anxiety. Now, when we're talking about normal anxiety, it is something which can help us. It can, It is something which can uh, sort of demotivate us or cause us problems. When we're talking about anxiety, it can be a normal anxiety, it can be an abnormal anxiety. Normal anxiety can help us perform better, whereas abnormal anxiety can hamper our performance. So today we are basically going to be talking about the abnormal anxiety, the anxiety which hampers our performance and when it becomes a problem to us. When we talk about anxiety, anxiety can present in two forms. It can be physical aspects, it can be psychological aspects. There's a constant worry that is a psychological aspect. You feel on the edge. You feel as if something is going to go wrong. There is constant sort of thought, multiple thoughts coming into your mind, which are mostly negative. This is something which will sort of make the psychological aspect of it. When we are talking about the physical aspect of it, we can experience a lot of uh, symptoms. A lot of times the physical aspects of the anxiety can be mistaken for any physical uh, uh, health issue. It can be mistaken for a heart attack. It can be mistaken for breathing difficulties. It is very important that whenever somebody is experiencing any of these symptoms that you do um, go to the doctor. You consult the doctor only then get diagnosed as you being anxious. So when we're talking about the physical symptoms, the physical symptoms we can uh, sort of talk about in head to toe. We feel heaviness in the head. A lot of people can experience headaches. A lot of people can experience dizziness. We can experience our body becoming hot or cold. We can experience dryness of mouth. We can experience dryness of throat. We can experience a choking sensation sometimes in throat. A lot of people also experience breathing difficulty. So you have to take a long breath in order to make yourself feel better. And that is mistaken for a breathing problem or you go to a doctor and say that I'm having some problem like a physical uh, health concern, but it is actually anxiety. When we talk about another physical aspect that is sweating profusely, tingling sensation in our hands and legs, there can be a fluttering sensation or a butterfly like sensation in our stomach. You can have the urge to go and urinate. You can have the urge to go to the bathroom. So these are certain physical aspects which are part of anxiety. Now you can have the psychological aspects as well as the physical component. You can have only the psychological component and not the physical component, or you can have just the physical uh, manifestations of anxiety. So it is important that when we are experiencing any of these symptoms in any um, uh, combination, we need to go to a mental health professional, we need to go to a doctor and consult them about it. When we talk about anxiety, anxiety can be in different situation. It can be uh, in a particular situation where it will, call, it will be called situational anxiety. It can be uh, generalized that all the time since the time you wake up in the morning to the time you go to bed, you're feeling anxious. That is generalized anxiety. It can be anxiety of, particular, of a particular event, of a particular um, you know, uh, condition, which can be irrational. You can be anxious about or you can have anxiety to say an animal. You see a dog and you feel very scared. You feel very anxious. That can be considered as a phobia. It is irrational. That is important. Anxiety can also co-occur with a lot of other mental health concerns and also physical health concerns. So it is not always that, you know, if you're diagnosed with anxiety, you might not be having any physical health concern. They go hand in hand. So you should always go to the doctor, consult the doctor for both your physical health as well as your mental health. When we are talking about anxiety co-occurring with other illnesses, with regards to mental health, it can occur when somebody is having depression. It can occur when somebody is having uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. It can occur when somebody is even having, say, um, 
uh, any form of anxiety, generalized anxiety with social anxiety or a particular phobia co-occurring with generalized anxiety. So it can be a combination of different types of anxiety which can also occur. When we talk about anxiety, there is a very important thing to keep in mind. When we have somebody in our family who has uh, experienced anxiety, it is likely that we can also experience anxiety. So family history is something which is important. So you need to know if somebody in the family has, has uh, had anxiety and you're experiencing similar symptoms, it is likely that you also require similar kind of help. The, uh, another important thing which we're going to talk about today is that you can have anxiety in uh, normal uh, aspects as well as in abnormal aspects. Certain things which we can modify or which we can do to help our anxiety in the normal aspects and in the abnormal aspects are lifestyle modifications. When we are talking about lifestyle modifications, few things which are very important is good and adequate sleep. Now when we talk about sleep, sleep can vary from, you know, so for somebody 6 hours of sleep would be fine, for somebody 8 hours of sleep would be adequate. So you need to figure out how much of sleep, the duration of sleep is adequate for you. Sleep is usually considered adequate when we wake up refreshed, when we wake up rejuvenated. If we are having, it, having adequate sleep, it is unlikely that we will experience any sort of uh, mental health concerns. So sleep is something which is very important. The second thing which we need to be careful about is our diet. What sort of diet? What sort of a diet are we taking? Are we taking a lot of caffeine in our diet? Are we taking a lot of junk food in our diet? Are we not taking a nutritious diet? It is known that caffeine is known to increase the anxiety if somebody is already struggling with anxiety. So it is important that if you are experiencing anxiety symptoms to cut down on your um, caffeine intake if you have a lot of caffeine intake. It is also important to avoid any sort of substances during that time. A lot of times what we do is that when we are experiencing anxiety, we resort to taking alcohol to combat the anxiety or taking nicotine in any form to combat the anxiety. That is not an adaptive way of coping with the anxiety. That is a maladaptive way of coping to anxiety. So it is important that you keep that in mind because using such substances can itself lead to other problems, other mental health concerns. So avoid using any substance to combat your anxiety. Another thing which is important is adequate exercise. We all lack adequate exercise is what I feel. These days we have sedentary lifestyles, we do not give ourselves adequate time to exercise, to walk. It is very important to have some amount of exercise in our usual routine. It need not be every day, it can be every alternate day. It can be 3-4 times in a week have around 30 minutes to 40 minutes um, given for yourself for exercise in the day. If you do that much, if you're able to modify these three things, you will be able to uh, control a lot of your anxiety. It is important that when we start having symptoms of anxiety that we try and work on these three things to combat our anxiety. However, there are chances that even after doing all these things, we might not be able to reduce our anxiety or we might struggle with anxiety. We might continue to have anxiety. It is important at that point of time to acknowledge that, okay, we have done whatever effort we could put and we need to go to a mental health professional, to a professional and get help. So it is important that we acknowledge that point and we get help. When we are talking about getting help for anxiety, Basically, it is the chemical imbalance, it is the psychosocial environment which can contribute to one having anxiety. So it is important to uh, sort of address those things. It is important to get the right sort of treatment for it medically. When we talk about um, treatment, there is also another aspect to treatment of anxiety, which is psychotherapy, which is talk therapy where you go to a mental health professional, they ask you questions, they talk to you about what is happening and they help you deal with it. When we talk about medications, it comes to different kind of medications. It's always better to consult somebody and then start taking anxiety. When you go to a doctor, when you go to a mental health professional, it is very important to openly talk to them about what are our questions, what are we experiencing. Try to tell them as much as possible so that they are able to help you in the best way. When we talk about certain myths around anxiety, 
you know some people say that anxiety is just a state of mind yes it is a state of mind it can be addressed to a certain extent by modifying our routines by modifying certain things but sometimes it can start hampering our performance and that's not just a state of mind it's also the need of the body there is also some other thing which is ex happening in the body which is leading to anxiety when we are talking about another myth around anxiety it is the medications when we talk about medications a lot of us have the myth that you know medications are going to be lifelong or medications are going to be addictive that is not the case usually if you are under correct supervision if you are under proper supervision of a medical uh, personnel of a medic mental health professional then you those things would be addressed and you would not have any problems with them in spite of that even if you start experiencing any sort of problems it is always better to go back to your doctor tell them that we are experiencing this we are not comfortable with this we would like to change the uh, course of treatment or the medication or whatever it is so it is very important to communicate what you are experiencing with the doctor now when we talk about anxiety anxiety is something which forms because of our experiences during life as well and that's where psychotherapy is something which is important as our experiences as we grow during our life we have certain experiences which can um, contribute to us developing anxiety that's where psychotherapy is something which is helpful to reflect back to see to change our thought process to change certain distortions which we develop in our thought process and help us combat the anxiety so when we start developing any of these symptoms first is acknowledging the symptoms knowing what is happening to you knowing if it could be something else or just anxiety by going to a mental health professional or a medical personnel getting diagnosed properly addressing them by discussing all your concerns with them and also making sure that you modify your lifestyle in a way that is suitable or that is uh, helpful in maintaining a good mental health so if with this i would like to end today's session and if you have any questions i would request you probably to leave your questions in the comment box we meet next week same time for another mental health notes episode where we discuss another important topic that is going to be work life balance thank you